Yo, Adam Saxon here with the guy in a cube. Another week, another roundup. I've got a couple items for you that you may be interested in. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. So bakshi has got a blog post with a quick tip that you may not have known. I actually didn't know this when I first saw it. I've like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I know you can hide columns and whatnot, but his blog post shows you how you can actually hide multiple columns at the same time, if that's something that you need to do inside of your data model. This is done inside of the relationships view inside of Power BI Desktop, and it involves some keyboard shortcuts. So if you actually need to hide multiple columns at the same time, be sure to check out this blog post to learn a new trick. Tristan Robinson's got a blog post talking about iconography in design, specifically in design of Power Apps and Power BI content. He does a good job talking about why you may wanna use icons and also gives you some links to some resources that may help you get the icons that fit your needs if you don't have an actual designer on hand to create custom icons for you. Tristan then shows you what he came up with looking at maybe some other sites that may give inspiration from a Power Apps perspective and then also shows you what he did from a Power BI dashboard perspective using icons where the actual visual doesn't necessarily tell the story of what the user is going to want to know. So if you want to take your Power Apps and your Power BI content to the next level, be sure to check out this blog post and maybe learn a thing or two. Eric svensson has got a blog post talking about how you can use different decimal separators from a Power Query perspective. The example Eric gives is if you have like CSV files that are importing data, multiple CSV files, some of them use an actual decimal, others use a comma. So it depends on the locale of your region and that data may be coming from different regions that you have to process. And so Eric walks through what he came up with to actually go through and dynamically determine which separator is actually being used and then changing the data type based on that. It's a pretty cool way of handling this type of situation if you do actually have to deal with multiple locales. So if you do have to deal with multiple locales, be sure to check out this blog post for details on how to do this. The link for this article and the links for all the articles in this week's roundup, along with some bonus articles are down in the description below. So be sure to check it out. Daniel Maslick, I hope I didn't pronounce your name wrong, has a blog post talking about how you can change the background color of your report. Changing your background color could be important depending on how you wanna see that report. By default, it's gonna have like a light gray as the default background of your report. And I've even heard from some customers that this can be confusing. Uh, it's maybe not something that they wanna do. If you're embedding, it could cause some problems. So this is something that you can actually change from a report definition itself. The trick to this, as Daniel points out, is using themes inside of your report. Specifically, the property is called outspace, and you can change the outspace, the color type used for that, inside of the JSON file that's used for your custom theme. Be aware at the time of this recording that custom theming is a preview item, and you will have to turn on that preview feature inside of Power BI Desktop if you haven't already. But if you want to change that space outside of the actual report that defaults to that gray, be sure to check out this blog post to see how you can do that with custom theming. We got the June update for the Power BI developer space and there were some pretty cool things inside of here. The big one that I saw, which I've actually heard a lot of people ask for, is how can I actually set a slicer value when I'm embedding reports? And before the answer was you can't. You can set filters, but you couldn't actually set the slicer values inside of your report. Well, now you can. You can do this through the JavaScript API and you'll wanna make sure that you've updated to the latest version of the JavaScript API SDK for Power BI. And once you have that, you can actually set those slicer values for your given report, which is awesome. I know a lot of people were asking for this. You can now use themes for your embedded dashboards, which is very cool. And there were some updates made to the interactive playground that you can use from a JavaScript perspective. And I'll have a link down below directly to that interactive playground for Power BI Embedded, which you can use if you haven't seen it, be sure to check it out. I know when I talk to a lot of people, they don't even know about this, but it is a very cool feature. So if you're doing any type of embedding with Power BI and using the JavaScript SDK as part of that, you wanna be able to check out this playground. It is a great way to get up and running. 
So for all the updates on the developer space, be sure to check out this blog post, links down below. All right, my favorite item for this week has to be that quick tip on how you can select multiple columns and hide them. I really like keyboard shortcuts, and so I'm excited to add this one to my utility belt of keyboard shortcuts. But I wanna pass this off to you. What do you guys think was the favorite item this last week? And if there was something that I missed, be sure to add that to the comments down below as well. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.